so yesterday we were discussing about exception handling and we have seen how to use this recover stage resume stage and how are we going to get the error message using exception detail method so we are using exception detail method to get the error message so and then what we have seen here is now when we try to execute this stage here how to throw an user defined exception that's what we were discussing yesterday and unfortunately because of some network issue we have stopped it in bit in middle okay so let us continue from there exactly from where we have stopped uh, can someone let me know how far you were able to uh, hear my voice like i mean in yesterday's session how far you guys are able to hear i mean to say like uh, at some point we have lost the connectivity right there is some internet issue from my end and uh, you lost the connectivity and uh, could someone let me know where we have stopped exactly yesterday after creation of calculation stage which calculation stage this one okay fine good just a second let us continue from there So here, I remember we have discussed so far, like, uh, so let's say for example, when I start the solution, which we have designed to process the data present in this input data collection. Now, when we continue, wait, 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 wait. let me reset this. Oh my God. Okay. Not respond. Just a second, guys. It went to infinite loop by mistake. I have clicked on step over. Let me end the task. okay so what we have done yesterday is so we have some records we have taken some records in the collection and we are trying to divide these numbers okay and then whenever there is an exception we are trying to handle that exception and we are capturing the error message using this calculation stage using exception detail function and we are planning to store the exception message in the result column if there is exception message for a record otherwise we'll continue with the remaining records basically okay now let us go ahead and run this and what we have done before we go ahead and run it right let me explain what we have done yesterday so i have moved the 
moved the calculation stage i have moved my calculation stage to a sub page this is our sub page okay so here i'm trying to explain two concepts one is exception bubbling one is exception bubbling and other one is how to throw user defined exceptions how are we going to throw user defined exceptions and how are we going to bubble up the exceptions okay now basically we are handling the exception using this recovery mode in the main page so previously we have the calculation stage over here now what we have done we have more the assume that we have the code in a sub page and there is an exception in the sub page and if you want to throw some user different exception from the sub page how are we going to do that so that is what we are going to learn now okay so now when we come back here set us next stage step 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 so we are going to execute the first record which is which is present inside the collection now once the first record has been executed you can see there will be the result value okay now second record will throw an error we know that second record is going to throw error and let us see how we are going to handle it so now when we have a recovery mode in the sub page that is going to handle the error which is thrown in the sub pages okay so this is the page divide in this page if you are going to get an error this recovery mode is going to handle it okay whereas when you execute that if you see what are we doing here is we are capturing the error message here but we are no more using this error message we don't want to use this error message so what are we doing we, do, we don't want to send this error message to the main page i want to send a user different error message i want to inform my customer a proper message if i say something like this to customer he won't be able to understand because what is this input data this is the name of the collection which we have defined if i say input data dot number one input data dot number two fail to evaluate expression division by zero what is it he is going to understand then no right he's not going to understand what exactly we are trying to convey him okay in that scenario what we will do is we are going to suppress the message which we have got here using resume stage we are going to resume the flow and now we are going to throw a new exception we are going to throw a new exception when you are going to throw a new exception in the sub page and in the same page if you have a recovery mode if you have a recovery mode and when you are trying to throw a new exception in the same page see what is going to happen when i continue you can see again the same recovery stage is able to catch the exception which is thrown from this exception stage what are we doing here what are we doing here exactly we are throwing the exception here what is that throw exception okay so we are throwing a new exception a user defined exception we are throwing a user defined exception okay and when we try to throw the exception this is not being handled in the main page and it is getting recovered by the same recovery stage which is present in the sub page now if i if i want to throw i mean if i want to handle the exception which is thrown from this exception stage in main page then what i can do here is i am going to utilize a block here i am going to utilize a block stage here so what is the purpose of block so basically this block stage right that is the reason i didn't talk about block initially so basically the block stage will help you to group the data items something like this you can mention something like this and say this is our input variables okay i mean this is not going to block the usage of data items here let me explain once again when i say block right you are just use it to group the data items here but when coming to the exception handling when coming to the exception handling if you try to use the block along with recovery stage if you try to use the block along with recovery then what is it going to do is it is going to block the stage it is going to block this stage okay and when there is exception in this stage only then this recovery mode is going to handle the exception so assume that in my sub page i have one more calculation stage if this calculation stage is going to throw any error now this recovery mode is not going to handle it okay this recovery mode is not going to handle it when i say block the stage is blocked to this recovery mode 
okay so this recovery mode will work only for this stage only when there is exception in this stage alone this recovery mode is going to handle the exception otherwise okay otherwise it simply throw the exception to the main page okay now if you see here now if you see here when i continue now it will not get into infinite loop now it is going to throw a new exception here we are going to throw the exception see what is going to happen once the exception is thrown here exception is thrown and immediately it went to recover stage in the main page immediately it came to recover stage in the main page now continue here we are going to read the error message and store it in the record okay result column you can see we can't divide a number by zero please check your input data understood okay now we are going to resume and continue with the next record okay now we are in the fourth record okay so what is the message we are getting here fail to evaluate expression division by zero and when i throw the exception here what is going to happen it is going to throw the user different exception which is present inside this which is present inside this okay this is how we are going to get the result understood anyone have any questions so far any questions related to any of the stages recover resume exception block any stage if you have any question please let me know No one have any queries? Okay, fine. Now I'm going to show you one more concept here in the exception handling itself. Guys, I'm waiting for so much time, and why are you taking this much time to ask the okay? Marsh, if you want me to repeat, you should have asked me initially only, right? Why are you taking so much time? Hmm? So you want please explain about throw exception. So basically, in the main page, we are not using the divide stage in the main page. What are we doing here is we are trying to divide the numbers in a sub page. Okay, we are trying to divide the numbers in a sub page. Just assume, yesterday I have explained you, just assume that there is a big flow in the main page and we are trying to split the, page, uh, split the flow in the main page and uh, put it in multiple sub pages. We are shifting the code to multiple sub pages here similarly we have created a divide page it is a sub page okay now in divide page so let's say for example i want to handle the exception here how will i do that so basically when i'm in the main page okay if i have this division stage directly in the main page if i have this uh, division calculation stage directly in the main page itself directly in the main page itself okay so set next stage second record and now here we are getting the error messages yes or no okay and if you see here 
what is the error message i'm getting here fail to evaluate expression okay something like this now what i have done i am moving this to the sub page here we are moving this to the sub page and we are going to link it to the and we are going to refer that page in the main page now we have moved the code in sub page okay assume that we have the flow in sub page here is the calculation stage now if this calculation stage is going to throw the error directly the main page will handle basically we no need to define this recovery mode here okay but instead of the error message which we have got previously instead of the error message which we have got previously instead of this message if i want to see a user defined message if i want to see a user defined message then we will use this exception we will use this exception stage so this exception stage will help you to throw a new exception so basically here it is by default it is throwing an exception yes or no when you are trying to divide a number by zero it will throw by default an exception just see here i'm going to reset the flow so by default you will get an exception for the second record if you see here so we got an error here we got an error what is the error message what is the error message fail to evaluate expression number one by i mean divide number one by number two and it is not possible because number two is zero okay now what am i going to do my requirement is i don't want to see this message i want to see a proper user different message so that the end customer whoever is going to use this solution whoever is going to use this solution for his purpose so whatever the error message we are going to convey him it should be a proper message so when i say uh, divide by zero i mean the message like this fail to evaluate expression what he will understand he will not understand anything the business people yesterday i have explained the same concept so the business piece people they are not completely from technical side so for that reason they won't be able to understand the technical messages here okay so for that reason we have to throw them a we have to uh, make sure that we are sending a proper error message to them which will be understandable by them okay in a normal language okay so here instead of technical language we should send it in a normal layman language okay now when i step now here i have defined a user defined exception when we resume right when we resume what is going to happen when we resume what is going to happen the error which has been captured here now it is suppressed it is suppressed but still we are saving the error in the data item that error message will be there but the exception which has been thrown from this stage is already resumed okay the recovery is recovery is able to resume that okay this recovery mode is able to resume that and now we are going to throw a new exception throw a new exception okay now this exception will hold some message here you can see there is a message exception detail and exception type now this detail will be handled in the main page if you see here step now recovery stage is able to i mean this stage has thrown the error throw exception has thrown a new error and it bubbled up to the main page it bubbled up to the main page and now you can see what is the error message we are going to get here you can see what is the value we are storing here read this error message we don't divide a number by zero please check your input data okay so are we storing this value or the message which is present inside this we are throwing this exception we have suppressed the exception which is thrown by the system and then we are throwing a new exception and new message and that is being recovered by main page why it is recovered by the main page because i am blocking the recovery mode in the sub page as i am blocking this whenever you throw an exception this won't be able to handle the exception in this page so automatically the exception will be bubbled up to the main page and when it gets bubbled up to the main page here already we have the recovery mode and this recovery mode is able to capture the exception and get the message and we are going to resume here and you can see the message 
okay now if i continue now this is going to be the next record you can see we are getting the other message but what is the message we are storing in the collection in the collection we are storing user defined exception that is nothing but user defined exception you might have already worked in dotnet right so in dotnet also maharshi we have this uh, try catch and throw is throw available or not have you guys used to throw when you are doing exception handling you might have thrown some new exceptions also right which is called as user defined exceptions yes or no the same way here also if you want to throw exception you have to use this exception stage okay is that clear any questions Marshi, is it clear now or you want me to explain it again okay fine anyone else have any other questions on this concept now here now here if you observe this now if you see here in the throw throw exception there is a checkbox called preserve the type and detail of the current exception what is that preserve the type and detail of the current exception okay so what is this preserve it is very important guys you'll be getting a uh, uh, question in the certification okay on this concept preserve okay so remember what we are we going to do here is what will happen if you check the checkbox and what will happen if you don't check the checkbox currently the checkbox is not checked yes or no currently we did not check the checkbox and we are able to see what, how it is running so what is the message we are able to see for second record what is the error message we are able to store in the collection what is the error message we are storing in the collection oh, wait 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 execute this one only then it will be stored in the collection so what is the value we are storing here we can't divide a number by zero please check your input yes or no we can't divide a number by zero please check your input this is the error message we are storing okay now I will go to this stage now when I am going to check on this checkbox. I'm going to click this checkbox. Okay Okay, preserve the type and detail of the current exception. This is the current exception This is the current exception which we are going to throw exception message now We are going to preserve this we are going to preserve this preserve in the sense. What is the meaning of preserve? We are going to preserve this. What do you, what do you mean by preserve? Hold it. We are going to hold it or we are going to save it. Okay. Okay. Now what is going to happen? See, once I say okay. Now when I continue, when I continue, observe this. What will happen to the second exception so here we have two records first record ran into exception and in this scenario when we ran this record we did not check that checkbox right and we got this error message now we have checked the checkbox we have clicked on the checkbox okay now i'm going to run this record see what will be the result see what will be the result now we are going to run the fourth record row four four of four now we are going to run the fourth record and what are we doing here we are preserving the exception what are we doing here we are preserving the exception see when you preserve the exception what is going to happen whatever the error message that you are going to get here whatever the error message that you are going to get here the same error message will be thrown from this exception this is going to throw a new exception and 
and if you remember what i said if you use recover calculation and resume stages right once you resume the previous exception will be lost but when you preserve this right whatever the error message is available in the previous uh, exception the same message will be thrown by this throw exception now if you see here it is going to throw the exception and you can see what will be the message stored in this see what is the message we are storing here what message we got here fail to evaluate expression the same system system message okay so the purpose of preserve here is the purpose of preserve here is let's say for example let's say for example if you are using an object here assume you are calling an object here you are calling an object here i just assume what i am trying to say here is assume that we are calling an object here now when you try to execute this and uh, this throw this action stage has thrown an error whenever this action stage throws an error i mean in the object studio we might be handling the errors in the object studio also so when you throw the error message when it comes to the sub page now here if you preserve it what are the message you are throwing from the object level will be coming to the sub page of the process and that will be same message going to the main page okay i'll explain that i'll explain that i'll explain that in the centric data solution application we are going to handle the exception there also okay then i will explain it but remember if you preserve it if you preserve it what is going to happen it is going to disable these two fields which means that it is no more going to throw this exception but it will throw the same exception which we got previously just remember that okay so that is the purpose of preserve any questions okay now let us implement the same exception handling concept in uh, our centric data solution process okay see each and every concept right when you combine multiple concepts only we are going to get a proper solution okay so it's not like simply uh, we go ahead and directly automate the solution okay so you should understand each and every concept queues are important exception handling is important every automation requires queues exception handling and uh, other features in blue prism okay any questions guys now let us go ahead and implement this in the process centrix data solution process okay so before we go ahead right now let us take a look at the document of exception handling document of exception handling so this is the exception handling document exception cases you will recall from the foundation training course the blue prism of queues okay i just forgot about it. i'll explain it anyways this theory and all right no need to 
so i explained about the exception bubbling concept right handling an exception how are we going to handle the exception in its current state the business object generates an exception so basically object is the one which is going to interact with the application right so if there is any exception in the object level when it tries to attach to a non existing notepad assume that we are trying to connect to a notepad file we are trying to connect to a notepad file but the notepad file is not launched so what is going to happen okay so it is going to throw an error message there is a scenario where we are planning to work on a notepad file but when we try to launch the notepad file we are not able to launch it okay assume in that scenario it is going to throw an error so what is going to happen when it throws the error the error will bubble upwards towards the main page it will bubble up to the main page of the parent process ultimately bringing the process to a stop okay now whenever there is an error we are going to stop the flow if there is something related to application so if the application is not available there is no point of point of processing the records also right so for that reason we are going to stop the flow also here so what are we going to do here is so whenever you get an exception this exception will be bubbled up to the sub page whenever you call it in the sub page and from the sub page it will go to the main page and in the main page we are trying to handle it and it is going to stop the flow if the application is not available that is how we are supposed to design it okay so this concept is called as exception bubbling what is that exception bubbling okay So here is the exception bubbling. Mm. Basically, here we have two types of exceptions defined. So here you can see the types of exceptions here. Just read these types of exceptions. You will be having system exception and business exception. Please go through that. Everyone take two minutes and go through that. What do you mean by system exception and what do you mean by business exception? so you can see here uh, what do you mean by business exception is basically uh, a process may be set up to deliberately uh, disregard certain types of cases for example if a process was designed to only work the cases of adult patients it may contain a rule to check the date of birth and uh, deem
Guys, are you able to hear me? Hello. Okay. Yeah, fine, fine, fine. Yeah. So, yeah, I was talking about this uh, business exception. So, if you see here, uh, if there is a, I mean, if a process was designed to only work the cases of uh, uh, alert patients, it may contain a rule to check the date of birth and deem juvenile cases as out of scope. So, juvenile cases in the sense like, uh, uh, let's say the cases which are not valid, cases which are not valid, okay, so which falls under out of scope. So basically, when you are trying to check the adult patients, you are going to check uh, based on their date of birth, you can identify how, how many years old they are, how many years old they are, okay? So based on that, we are going to identify what type of cases they are. Are they coming, uh, do they fall under this out of scope or are they fall under, I mean, adult patients, etc. So such, uh, these are called as business rules. When we violate these business rules, right, then we are going to define it as a business exception. Is that clear? So here we are going to define it as a business exception here. Similarly, system exception, you can see whenever you see this application gets crashed or freezing, styling, running slowly or doing anything they weren't supposed to do, something problem with the applications, right, those will be termed under those will be defined as system exceptions okay so that is the difference between system and business exceptions we are going to have the main types of exceptions will be system and business exceptions and under business exception other types other types there are no restrictions on how you choose to classify the exceptions and you may want to use terms or other than system and business basically there will be system and business exceptions only okay apart from that if you want to classify the exceptions in a more appropriate manner or in a more ac accurate manner in a more accurate way okay blue prism recommends that the number of exception types used is kept to a minimum to ensure ease of understanding and support okay so that is the reason what we do is uh, we ideally follow system exception and business exception types only but whereas if you still want to uh, go further and make the exception types more accurate then you can use these exception types validation exception the data input into the process has been validated and failed so let's say for example if you want to input six digits and we have entered only five digits into employee id text box assume into employee id text box we are supposed to enter six digits and we have entered only five digits is that uh, a business rule failure yes or no validation has been failed okay now similarly system exception try once log login system exception while logging in into the application that might throw multiple errors over there sometimes the username password may not be correct or sometimes when you are trying to log in right you will be getting some pop-ups uh, please accept the policy or please accept uh, please click on okay button and some you can see some unexpected pop-ups when you log in okay system unavailable exception likewise if you want to define you can define multiple exceptions here okay so and coming to the internal errors coming to the internal errors yesterday someone have asked me if uh, i remember that so what what is internal so basically internal is like what internal is generated by the blue prism application itself and you can see what are all the types of exceptions we'll be getting from that okay under internal, you can see syntax error, missing data, not connected, already connected to an application, unable to match any windows with the query terms. All these are the internal errors only. Okay. So now we can convert them into system exception or business exception based on our requirement. Okay. So you don't need to struggle much here because here also what they're doing right each and every concept they are taking an example and explaining it here they are taking an example and explaining it here what i have done already to you i have already explained to you right how we are going to handle the exception how recovery is going to work how resume is going to work 
how are we going to resume the flow how are we going to bubble up the exception how the exception is bubbling up everything we have already seen everything okay the same thing again we are going to implement in the object studio also and process studio in centris data solution process okay and coming back to this exception document in this exception document see here we are throwing the exception also right we are throwing the exception user defined exception if you want to set a user defined exception how can we throw a new exception here okay by using this exception stage we are going to throw a new exception here okay so you can see the recovery more you can see here this is recovery mode where the exception is alive between recover and resume stage only you can have exception alive okay recovery mode has ended and the exception is dead understood recovery mode that is recovery mode okay so what do you mean by recovery mode recovery mode is the place where you will be having your exception alive so once you come out of the resume what is going to happen the exception will no more be available okay okay so this is what we are going to do here now let us come back let us do the exception handling in our process so before we go to there let me open this development best practices also So coming to the development best practices. Why is it taking time to load? One second. And uh, so here, see here. While we design our object, right? When you design the object. So remember, if you remember, uh, we are using wait stages. In most of the action pages we are using wait stages and coming to the timeout we have left a timeout like that yes or no if you remember we have left the timeout okay but we are not supposed to leave the timeout like that we are supposed to link the timeout to exception stage link the timeout to exception stage i didn't explain it previously because first of all we need to understand how this exception stage is going to work and what are we going to do with this exception stage so basically this exception stage will help us to throw the exception throw the exception yes or no okay so if you see here wait stage at start of the action this will confirm that the process is on the correct path and absorb uh, system latency to increase the resilience of the process okay so they are explaining why we are using this wait stage you know right why we are using this wait stage to make sure that we are on the right page and right path okay for that reason we are going to use this wait stage okay and what are we supposed to do with the timeout then so and when we use the wait stage we are going to define a condition and for that condition we are going to proceed if this condition is not satisfied it will simply go to timeout if this condition is not satisfied it will simply go to timeout and from timeout we are supposed to throw a exception we are supposed to throw an exception here okay do not try and recover the process following the wait stage what are they telling do not try and recover the process they're telling that don't recover this exception which is thrown from the type timeout you are supposed to throw a new exception throw the exception and let the process handle it in the object level we are not going to handle the exception all the exceptions we are not supposed to handle all the timeout exceptions okay we are supposed to throw the exception from the timeout and 
our uh, process should be able to handle the exception in the process studio so that is what is called as a, i mean exception bubbling so in the object level from timeout we will throw the exception and that will be bubbled up to the main page of the process okay I mean, before we go ahead and start the design, right? You might ask me, why are we doing it in this way only? Why can't we go ahead and use recover stage, resume stage, and all, right? So for that reason, I am explaining you uh, before we start the implementation of exception handling in our process itself. I am trying to explain you why are we doing that and how are we going to do that by following these best practices methods, okay? So avoid using arbitrary weights. Arbitrary weights in the sense like uh, without any condition, right? If you define a weight stage, that is called as arbitrary weight. Okay, it will ask you to avoid that. Always wait for the screen to change. Always wait for the screen to change. We are using the conditional weights here, yes or no? We are using the conditional weights only. and uh, use wait stages after navigating stages or any stage that causes the screen to update okay so where and all we have to use wait stage wait stage should be used if you are navigating from one page to another page or whenever you click on some button and if it is going to do some changes in the page i mean to say like let's say for example sometimes what is going to happen in a same page itself you select something and automatically it will pop up a new uh, grid or a new uh, text boxes in the same page okay in that scenario also we are going to use this wait stage okay you read that message here use wait stages after navigate stages or any stage that causes the screen to update okay this will absorb any latency but also ensures the process runs at the fastest speed in this example there is no point waiting five seconds if the system is available for one second okay so if the system will be available for one second so let's say for example centrix data solution application when you try to launch it if it is going to be available in the first second itself then there is no point of waiting for five seconds right for that reason all our wait stages have been defined with a condition we are going to check the condition once the screen is available immediately go ahead and work on that screen if the screen is not available if the screen is taking some time then wait for it wait for it and meantime keep checking if the element is available on the screen or not whatever you have mentioned in the condition so once it is available immediately go ahead and continue with that okay For all the exceptions which you are throwing from the timeout, right? Provide appropriate type and detail. Type and its detail. So here, if you see application modeler, how are you going to define the application modeler? Uh, login page, input input username input password or you can use a text box text box or input it's up to you okay adheres to local naming convention typically this is element type and element name example button what is the name of the button name of the button is submit we have button login etc right button go likewise so this is the naming convention we follow either you use underscore or hyphen okay create sections for each part of the screen that's what we have done yes or no while we have developed the application modeler if you remember did we do it in the same way
go to the application modeler have we defined the sections here yes or no login window home window order menu what is the best what's happening What is that, Bala? You are typing something. So here, if you observe here, okay, that's fine. It's okay. It's okay, Bala. No problem. Yeah. So if you observe here, uh, yeah, window login. Take a look at the best practices document also here what we have have we defined our application modeler also in the same way how we have defined it here yes or no so we did we follow the best practice methods here same thing that we have done in the object okay so development best practices in the application modeler for attribute selection for attribute selection okay see here uh, no environment specific data i explained you if you remember no environment specific data we eliminate parent url and path yes or no parent url path if you remember environment specific data will cause the process to fail when mi when migrated when migrated when what do you mean by migration migration of the process from dev environment to qa environment and qa environment to production environment okay if required make the value as dynamic okay we did not come across the dynamic concept yet i will explain the concept of dynamic okay don't worry about that i will explain the concept of this dynamic later only when it is required we are going to make it as dynamic otherwise we will try to eliminate the environment specific values okay and also uh, no customer data customer data captured within the element attributes could breach data security so for that reason so let's say for example if you are capturing any uh, text box or something like that if they you are getting some value right like customer data and all don't select those check boxes okay so let's say if it is something related to button so assume that the value is button here if you see login that you can capture in that scenario you can select that in that scenario we can select it okay otherwise something related to customer data try to avoid it okay Our run modes so we'll talk about this later now, uh, did i miss something in object studio these are the best practices which we have followed also already yes or no i hope we have followed all the best practices here and we are at to come across some of the concepts so just wait for that i'm trying to check if we have missed something now let me go to so in the process uh, best practices also we are not supposed to leave the a big flow in a main page itself we are not supposed to create the flow in the main page itself if you see here this is a bad practice we are not supposed to do like this so how can we improve the process the process needs improving to make it more granular more robust and easier to control so how are we going to improve it we are going to improve it a simple main page and using sub pages we are going to improve it by using a simple main page the main main page should be simple main page should talk about the high level flow start up the application populate the queue get next item process uh, pro, i mean uh, check the item id is available or not go ahead and uh, create the code i mean launch it or create the code whatever it may be save the reference number and mark the record as completed and again go ahead and get the next item understood hmm? so is it the same thing what we have designed here in our process are we following the same best practices method here also check it so we have added extra features also to our process what are the extra features we have added we are trying to check if the 
Q item is having pending items or not? If the Q item is having pending items, what are we going to do? We are going to skip the load to Q stage and directly we'll start up the application. Get the next item here. Check item ID is available or not. Item ID available, create the order. Okay, and store that and then mark the record as completed likewise. Okay. Are we following the best practices? Yes or no? We have not yet implemented this. We will implement this. We will come across that. Uh, slowly we will go step by step. Because if I include all the concepts in a single go, it will be confusing. Okay. That is the reason I am going step by step. Okay. And now when you come to the exception handling, you can see how they are handling the exception. They are using block and recover. Okay. So if you see here, robustness main page exception block if an exception bubbles up to our main page from a sub page so these are all the sub pages right we are referring the pages here yes or no so even in our process here even in our process here if you see we are referring the sub page here what is that we are referring the sub page what is the sub page create new order in this create new order we are having multiple actions again yes or no hmm? okay now come back to that so that sub page uh, bubble up from sub page we don't want the process to terminate we don't want the process to terminate main page block in the flow shown on the right i have added the following a block around the main work interface sub pages with a recover stage a mark exception action stage that marks the current work queue item as an exception so while creating the order whenever you see an exception whenever you get an exception what are we going to do inside the queue we are supposed to mark that record as exception we have not yet implemented it we are going to implement it now we are about to implement it okay we have not yet done it okay we are going to do that so what are we going to do whenever we get an exception we recover that we mark that record as exception in the queue and then resume the flow so that it will go ahead and get the next item. Okay. Clear. Why is this better? All work queue items should have a result set by the process, either completed or exception. I told you yesterday, right? We should not leave the process in lock. I mean, any queue item, we should not leave any queue item in locked status. If you leave the queue item in locked status and if you try to reset it, what is going to happen? It will automatically move the queue item to the exception. Okay. And here to get more robustness, what are we supposed to do is in the sub page, we have to define retry loops. What is that? Retry logic. Retry logic. Guys, you are going to get multiple questions on the document which I'm showing you right now in certification. If you're planning to do certification seriously, then go through this document. You will get a lot of questions. So you'll get a uh, you'll get snippets like this. Basically, in the certification, right? They'll give an image. They'll give an image like this. Okay. And in this image, okay, in this image, they will do a small mistake somewhere okay now they will ask you is my exception handling flow is correct or not and we should be able to analyze that and we should be able to answer it okay so that is how the certification questions are going to be i'm sorry guys so this is how the certification questions are going to be okay And uh, yeah, we do retries in the sub page. We don't retry in the main page, okay? Environment variables or queue tags. I think I have explained environment variables, right? Okay, 
so we have to group the data items also in our process grouping them see here you use standard blue prism template or templates provided by the local design authority okay the standard logic of the template enables uh, familiarity that makes uh, support easier and guys i'll explain you what is the template and all okay but first now let us go ahead and proceed with our flow okay then i will show you what is the standard blue prism development template they have given and are you follow, going to follow i uh, have we developed in the same way or not you will be able to identify that once i am going to done with the once i done with this right then you can compare the template what they have given and what we have built then you will come to know whether we have followed all the best practices or not okay now we are going to the exception and naming conventions okay guys naming conventions is one of the important concept again naming conventions when you are going to define the object right name of the application and screen name okay inside that uh, when you define the action pages right all the action pages so you have to define name of the application and what is the action related to that okay that should be your object name and inside that object you are going to define the actions and process how are you going to create the process and development best practices zero errors to try to validate the flow that's all this is also very important document okay 